All right, guys, I haven't done a top 20 Fougere video in ages. So today I've got a new Fougere list, a top 20, new fragrances, unique fragrances, but some really, really great fragrances. Most of them are fairly modern. I don't have too many classics here, although I have one or two snuck in that uh, are classics, uh, but very modern smelling. Either way, top 20 Fougere fragrances just in time for Father's Day. So if you want to find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yesterday I'm talking about Fougere fragrances, one of my favorite styles. I just posted an Instagram post on two classic aromatic Fougere fragrances, Kouros, Dracar Noir. They're not on the list today. Look for look for a, a, a classic Fougere video in the near future. But as I said, most of these are fairly modern releases, uh, very, very classic masculine offerings. But I want to give credit to Dracar Noir. Probably that's the fragrance uh, that really triggered my interest and passion for this particular style of, uh, you know, perfumery. Um, Dracar Noir was one of the fragrance, uh, the fragrances I wore most in uh, during the 80s, probably starting around 84, 85, and I wore it towards uh, the end of the 80s, and I went through probably four bottles. I was wearing it to high school and things like that, so I really, really enjoyed Fougere fragrances, and I still do, and I've got 20 of them here. And uh, before I get to the fragrances, though, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I want to also let you know I have this awesome, awesome Aromatic Fougere t-shirt. If you haven't gotten yourself one, you can. I have a discount code, uh, Fougere, and it'll save you 10% off of this t-shirt. It's basically Aromatic Fougere. As you can see, the fern, and Fougere basically is translated to fern in French. And uh, there's a lot of videos I have on the topic on the channel if you want to find out more about Fougere fragrances and why is it called Fougere, why is there a fur and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, look into that. But the t-shirt uh, and the discount code 10% off is Fougere. Uh, it's a great, uh, you know, fun, um, you know, sort of kind of educational and botanical themed uh, t-shirt uh, focusing on the Fougere. Anyway, get yourself a, a t-shirt. I have a link in the info box. And we're going to start off right off the bat. I'm going to do this video as uh, quick as possible. Viking Cologne at number 20 from Creed. I have to include this here. I love its freshness and I love its um, aromatic spicy qualities and there's loads of mandarin orange here, bergamot, so that's all the fresh stuff. And then chalk full of uh, lavender, pink pepper, geranium, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, nutmeg, and, and also some lemons as well. So there's a little bit of a, an astringent quality with this one, but a really, really solid release. I think most people are not really into the price point of this one, so maybe you wait until there's a availability at the discounters, but I think it's a really, really fresh fragrance. The original is probably also really, really great. Not probably, definitely is, but I like this one because because of its freshness and it's brand new. So Viking Cologne at number 20. Next going to a house called Imaginary Authors. This is Telegramma and this is kind of a, a very interesting powdery uh, experience with the Fougere qualities with notes of talc, lavender, amorous, teakwood, vanilla, linen, black pepper. So it's definitely aromatic, it's definitely spicy and then it's got some floral and sweet touches, vanillic touches as well but definitely kind of um, a barbershop-y uh, fougere style with the lavender and some of the other notes. So, Telegram, a great scent from Imaginary Authors. It's at number 19. Continuing on with the powdery theme, at number 18, it's 1725 Casanova from the House of Histoires of Parfums. This one, to me, is a powdery fougere is it really a fougere? You know, I, it's, it's a toss-up, similar to this one. Uh, there, there's a toss-up. They have those qualities and things like that, so I'm featuring them here, but I'm featuring them at the bottom because they're not your traditional Fougere style fragrances. But there's loads of lavender here, vanilla, almonds, licorice, star anise, amber, sandalwood, grapefruit, citruses. I would call this a gourmand Fougere, gourmand aromatic Fougere fragrance. Yes, it's uh, questionable if it really does go into that direction. To me, it doesn't really smell like a fern because Fougere fragrances are supposed to be uh, fragrances. If ferns had a 
real smell, that's what the fern would smell like basically. That's the first fougere that came out in 18, uh, late 1800s. Uh, it's a toss up, but I'm going to feature it here. It's 1725 Casanova from Histoires de Parfums at number 18. So as I said, I have some newbies in here. This is from the House of Javoy. Finally I have this fragrance and I'm enjoying it. It's more of a fresher take on a fougere with a deeper dry down though. The fragrance is Le Art de la Guerre from the House of Javoy, and it features loads of lavender. There's Immortel here, the everlasting flower. There's rhubarb, leather, green apple, oak moss, patchouli, violet leaf, lavender. So there are notes in here that kind of wear light. R violet leaf and the rhubarb for me are not heavy fragrance notes, but then the leather is pretty uh, intense. But I think it's a, a great take on a fresh kind of a, uh, aromatic, spicy uh, experience, especially with the ozonic touches of the violet leaves, which kind of dries down to more of a deeper fragrance and it's dry down, gets leathery and ambery. So, L'Art de, de la Guerre from the House of Javoy. If you don't know that one, check it out. The next one I'm going to the house of, if I can find the fragrance, is the House of Inica. This is Idlewild, this one right here, a San Francisco house. And Idlewild is a, another kind of a fresher take on a fougere, but more of like a pine forest kind of a fougere. Once again, we have rhubarb here. I like this rhubarb note, you know? There's a light fruitiness with rhubarb, and then there's there's also a little bit of a gelatinous uh, quality with it as well when you uh, feature it in fragrances. I really like that about it. But rhubarb, grapefruit, cypress, woods, cardamom, fir, artemisia, tea, lavender, musk, and oud. Oud is not so prominent for me, but it's like kind of walking into a, a forest, a green uh, pine forest, uh, and you're kind of like, you know, spraying on some barbershop-y kind of uh, fragrances uh, with the pine forest smell all around you. So that's Idlewild from Inica. The next one is most likely an inexpensive one. Uh, I think you can find deals on this one. It's from the house of Lalique. This is Lin Sumi, this one right here. So this one is very aromatic and barbershop-y. I really love the smell of this one. It's low because it is on the light side, but I think if you're looking for a budget fougere, barbershop, aromatic, spicy kind of fragrance, definitely check this one out. There's also a little bit of a boost touch in here but it's a solid release it's just wears a little light for me clary sage basil woodsy notes rum lavender vetiver yeah i think this one totally you can wear in the summertime if you like the barbershop fougere fragrances definitely check out lalique's lunsumi at number 15 and the next fragrance going to the house of florist it's verte fougere once again a unique take on fougere so fougere fragrances, you know, smell like uh, are supposed to smell like if ferns had a smell, and this one does definitely has those greenish touches, fern-like qualities with the aromatic and spicy notes. But there is that f f smoke note thrown in here, which kind of, you know, it might seem odd, but I think. Uh, what they've done here is uh, pretty solid. It's a smoky take on fougere. Perhaps there's like, you know, like a fire burning in the forest where the ferns growing and things like that and you're experiencing the smoke and all the aromatics at the same time. But lots of lavender here, galbanum, smoke, cedarwood, amber. So it's kind of a bitter green aromatic fougere with that smoke note. I think it's a really great fragrance. It's unique and I don't have any fougeres here that have the smoke note. So vert fougere at number 14. So next up going to the house of Milano Cento. This is for him. So this is a great classy, uh, classic leaning masculine ar aromatic fougere fragrance, barber shoppy style, and I really enjoy it. And I have Eau de Toilette and also Eau de Parfum. I'm featuring the Eau de Toilette today because it is a Father's Day weekend. And then also uh, it's a summertime, so you want something fresher. And I like this. Uh, not only can it wear fresh, but also you experience the kind of aromatic, spicy, barbershoppy touches. And there is a spicy edge here with the cloves, loads of sandalwood, lavender, pettigran, cloves, cinnamon, patchouli, clary sage, bergamot, and rosemary. Great, great fragrance and fresh, but still classy, masculine, and also classic leaning. So for him by Milano Cento is at number 13. Next up, going to the house of Nishane. This is B612. This one is Nishane's take on uh, a fougere fragrance, but lots of cashmere in here. Definitely noticeable note with cypress, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood, musk, tonka beans, cedar, oak moss, geranium. You know, it's a classy scent. It's not one of my all time favorite fragrances from this house, but I think it's a solid release. It's very, very classy. It's definitely, you know, 
Nishane style with um, the Fougere uh, barbershop uh, type of fragrance, but it is a unique take on it with lots of cypress and cashmere and patchouli and vetiver. Although I do get some lavendery touches under there, but I think it might be not like a prominent note because uh, a lot of the cypress and cashmere and, and patchouli are appearing a little more here. So Nishane B612 is at number 12. This next one has been a big surprise for me and I'm really, really digging it lately. In fact, I featured it in a video of most worn fragrances recently a couple days ago. This is from the house of Loewe. This is Essencia EDT. If you don't know this one, check it out. A lot of people compare it to Polo. I think it's um, different to me. Yes and no kind of smells similar and kind of doesn't smell similar. It's not as intense with the leathery touches and also it doesn't seem like it's uh, reformulated to the worst because Polo is. But this is a green green take on an aromatic Fougere fragrance. Lots of fern, pine needles, lavender, oak moss, leather, juniper berries, green notes, tarragon, and galbanum. A very, very classy fragrance. I think it's a great fragrance. A very green, aromatic, spicy, uh, definitely a perfect fragrance for uh, anyone looking for those classic fragrances, but still smelling modern because even though this came out in the late 80s, I think it's been reformulated to smell pretty modern. And I mentioned in my video, in, in, the, in the most worn fragrances video, that this does kind of remind me of fragrances like Houbouin's Fougere Royale and um, Tom Ford's Beau de Jour and things like that. So it's really, really great. Check it out. Essencia by um, Loewe, but it's Essencia EDT. Don't get the EDP because they smell nothing alike. So this next one going to the house of Parfums du Cita and it's Isara. It's a very, very warm and honeyed uh, take on a Fougere classic. A leaning, uh, you know, I think it's a unisex offering, uh, especially because it has all those warm and ambery touches, like a honeyed fougere is what I would call this. It smells of fall, dry uh, foliage and things like that. But loads of tobacco here, coumarin, sage, pine, vetiver, woodsy notes, oak moss, amber, and musk. It's a great, great wear. I really love wearing it. And if you like ambery fragrances with that fougere styling, I think you should definitely check this one out. Isara from the House of Parfums du Cita. The next one I'm talking about is from the House of uh, Hubegan. This is Fougere Royale at number nine. Yes, it slipped a little bit, but still, I think this is the ultimate in Fougere fragrances. In fact, this is uh, in its original form, which was launched in the late 1800s, was the very first Fougere fragrance. Fougere meaning fern or fern-like. So basically, what they were trying to do is recreate the smell of ferns if ferns had a smell kind of a thing, you know. Ferns do have a smell, but they're not really, really strong. And what they've done here is given us a, like a potent rendition of what a fern would smell like and I think it's caught on it's been around since the late 1800s and obviously this is the 2010 version of uh, Fougere Royale and I think it's a great classy masculine fragrance and the bottle is gorgeous as well I think if you give this as a Father's Day gift to a dad I think he'll be completely satisfied the notes are lavender geranium oak moss green notes chamomile bergamot carnation cinnamon clary sage patchouli see you've got all those green, green woody earthy fresh notes perfect uh, you know fragrance for anyone looking for a barbershoppy Fougere fragrance or classy a masculine fragrance offering. So Fougere Royale at number nine. The next one I'm going to is from the house of Amouage. It's a Bracken Man, this one right here. And Bracken Man is uh, kind of similar to, uh, you know, Fougere Royale, but different. I feel like the um, spices in here are much more prominent than the, the spices in Fougère Royale. I get a major clove prominence here in contrast to the Fougère Royale, but it's definitely a solid release from this house. I think they've done a great quality Fougère fragrance in Amouage style. Notes are cloves, patchouli, geranium, cypress, lavender, nutmeg, cedar, musk, lemon, and sandalwood. Very, very classy wear. I really love it. And it's kind of edged out, uh, you know, ahead of um, Fougère Fougère Royale, because I've spoken a lot about Fougère Royale, I've worn a lot of it, and I think this one's doing it a little more for me in comparison to Fougère Royale for this particular video. So Bracken Man from Amouage is at number eight. Next, going to the house of Chanel, this is Boy. Have you guys tried Boy? Do you like the idea of Boy? This is a unisex offering for a Fougère fragrance, and you know, still kind of leans masculine, but definitely Chanel-esque, and also Chanel DNA can be uh, smelled in here. You got 
the Chanel DNA in here. But loads of lavender here with geranium, white musk, heliotrope, sandalwood, vanilla, grapefruit, orange blossom. It does have powdery touches. Whenever you experience heliotrope in a fragrance, just think of almondy smell and powderiness because that, that note does add that to fragrances. Musks always go uh, powdery as well. So this is kind of a powdery take on a fougere, but not as powdery as something like 1725 Casanova or Telegrama. Uh, still, very um, fougere-like, but in Chanel style and a little on the powdery side. I think it's definitely classy. It might lean a little uh, unisex or maybe even feminine to some men I've heard, but I, I really think it's a great scent. Chanel Boy at number seven. And somebody was asking the other day, why is it called Boy? Boy is the name of a, a man that Chanel was in a relationship with. So that's why it's called Boy, not uh, because it's made for boys or something. That's what they were uh, mentioning in the uh, comments. The next fragrance is from the house of Maison Francis Crook and it's Masculine Pluriel. So this one's grown on me a lot and I really enjoy it and I like it but it still gets deeper and richer as it's drying down but all lavender and vetiver up top with patchouli, cedar, woodsy notes and of course leather. There's some ambery touches in there and then of course it's loads of lavender with vetiver and patchouli so it's grassy, earthy and aromatic and spicy. A very very classy fragrance. Not a lot of people talk about this because most people talk about Baccarat Rouge 540, but this is definitely a very, very classy, gentlemanly fragrance from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian. It's Masculine Pluriel. This next one's so good, so, so good. I didn't really care for the original version, but when the Parfum Cologne launched, I fell in love with it. Scandal Pour Homme Parfum Cologne from the house of Raja Parfums. It's a fresh take on uh, a fougere. It also has these classic touches under there and it's very, very lemony. There's a lots of lemony touches and the original did have lemon as well, lots of it. Here it's a fresh lemon, whereas the other one can be a little bit astringent. This one, just really a pleasure to wear. I really, really love it. Fresh, spicy, citrusy with loads of oak moss, lemons, lavender, mint, ambergris, cloves, patchouli, lily of the valley, jasmine. So there are floral touches. There's definitely green touches, but it's an overdose of freshness and earth uh, with the notes and aromatic touches. Scandal Parfum Pour Homme Cologne or Scandal Pour Homme Parfum Cologne is what it's called from the house of Raja Parfums at number five. Up next at number four it's Cartier's Pasha de Cartier Parfum. A great scent. Uh, a great release from this house, an amber fougere experience, very warm and uh, spicy touches with woods under there as well. But up top, it's all, you know, uh, aromatic notes and wood, spicy touches. I think the original is also great. Might be a little too old fashioned or, or old man kind of smelling from what I've heard. But this does remind me of the original from 1990 or 91 is when it originally came out. But they've done a great job here, warmed up the aromatic fougere notes to give us a kind of an ambery experience with the fougere touches. Solid, solid release from Cartier. At number four, it's Pasha de Cartier Parfum. Next up, going to the house of Tom Ford, it's Beau de Jour, this one right here. Beau de Jour is a great release. I'm glad they brought it into the signature lineup. Originally, it was in the private blend, but great, great fragrance. Overly pungent with the lavender, lots of lavender, lots of, uh, so it's aromatic, very, very aromatic with this one. The lavender note is great, and it's featuring two kinds of lavender here with rosemary, patchouli, oak moss, mint, basil, geranium and amber. So in the end, overdose of aromatics and the herbs and lots of ambery uh, woods in the base as well. So upon initial spray, as I said, it's overdose of the lavender with all those additional aromatic herbs. It's a great barbershop -y fougere fragrance. I think it's really, really solid. So that is Tom Ford's Beau de Jour at number three. At number two, it's a Rogue Perfumerie's Bon Monsieur. Um, some of these brands uh, are featuring uh, fragrances that um, have multiple fragrances and I've decided to um, uh, only feature one of them. And I was actually looking for a few brands to see if they had fougeres, they didn't. But either way, this brand does. But today I'm only featuring Bon, Mis bon Monsieur and it's a great, great fragrance. And I think it could be neck and neck with this one, definitely. But he's done a very, very great job with creating Bon Monsieur with the, the aromatic notes. But this one features lots of geranium, loads of it. Geranium, lavender, fir, oak moss, cedar, bergamot, sandalwood, lily of the valley, carnation. So the notes kind of remind me of the notes of uh, Fougère Royale, but this is a very indie take on it. And most likely Rogue Perfumery uses real um, 
real oak moss. Uh, oak moss is banned, or, and, and it's only allowed in very, very minuscule amounts. Rogue Perfumery is indie perfumery here from California, so he does use the real stuff. And it really does wear gorgeously here. Really, really great. I wanted to feature Mousse Illuminate, but to me it's not really a fougere. It's more of a cheaper style, so I left that off, but that is another great fragrance with real oak moss. But this is a really, really solid fougere barbershoppy fragrance. Rogue Perfumery, Bon Monsieur. And my number one, can you guess it? This is probably going to shock a lot of people. <laughs> This is Eau de Minte from the House of Diptyque. I'm obsessed with this fragrance. This one really reminds me of Dracar Noir, the fougere that I wore so much of, aromatic fougere I wore so much of in the 80s. It is a modern take on that smell, but I love it. I love it. It brings back so much memories. I, I should do a comparison video of this with Dracar Noir because it reminds me of it so much, but I love it because the mint here is so overly pungent. Mint is a tricky note for me, but it is a winning... Uh, smell here. It really does smell great. It doesn't smell like uh, toothpaste or anything like that, but a wonderful creation from Diptyque. Very, very reminiscent of the 80s for me with lots of mint, geranium, nutmeg, patchouli, and rose. If you like the 80s powerhouse-ish types of uh, fragrances, I highly recommend you try this one. I have heard from women that this leans too masculine. It reminds them of their father or grandfather or things like that. I could see that. This is a unisex release, but definitely leans masculine from Diptyque. But definitely check it out. Eau de Minté is my number one favorite. I really love it. And if you guys haven't noticed, I left off uh, one very, very popular fougère fragrance. I'm completely out of it. Penhaligon's Sartorial. Sadly, I'm out of it, and I wanted to do this video. I wasn't able to buy another bottle. That is another great fragrance you guys could try. I've spoken a lot about it on the channel. I've got videos and things like that about it. But that left, I left that one off. But either way, this is my current top 20 Fougere fragrances. I know it's a little different and maybe I shocked you guys with this one being in my number one but I think it's a great scent. I really love that one and check it out if you haven't uh, checked it out especially if you like fragrances like Dracar Noir. Either way let me know if you're fans of these fragrances and what do you think about them. What other Fougere fragrances would you add to this list? Let me know. Put some comments down. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. Happy Father's Day if you're a dad. Um, I don't know what day I'm going to air this video. Uh, I'm having a tough time this weekend, uh, so it might end up airing on Sunday or Saturday. We shall see. But if you're a dad, happy Father's Day or happy Father's Day to your dad. Other than that, thanks so much for tuning in. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos and giveaways very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. glad you stuck around for a bonus fragrance. Now, I don't know if I should have added this fragrance here, but I'm kind of uh, at a loss. Is it a fougere? Is it a barbershoppy fragrance? Maybe it's not, but I'm going to feature it here as a bonus fragrance. I'm talking about the House of J-Scent with their fragrance Sumo Wrestler with its kind of aromatic fougere-like qualities, but along the way very powdery and kind of sweet touches as well. So it's very, very unique fragrance, very, very musky, but loads of musk here, heliotrope, sandalwood, patchouli, eucalyptus, anise, and violet as a note. Uh, of course, as I was just saying earlier, heliotrope, whenever you smell it, you get the uh, almondy touch and powdery touches. And this, uh, to me, has loads of heliotrope with musk, but kind of reminds me of barbershoppy fragrances. It kind of reminds me of this uh, telegramma. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, 1725 Casanova. So once again, it's a toss-up. But I wanted to feature it as a bonus fragrance because I find it to be a very, very great quality release. One of the best from this house, I think. So this is my bonus fragrance, Sumo Wrestler from the house of Jay Scent. Check it out if you don't know it. Thanks so much for watching all the way till the end.